Hello and welcome back to the Pioneer Home on this beautiful summer day. Today's story begins with four gallons of fresh raw cow's milk. Now we don't have a cow yet here on our little farm, but I am practicing. So today I thought I would share with you all the things I made with four gallons of raw cow's milk. I am a mother of almost four. This baby will be here in just a few weeks and I can tell we are getting close. I am passionate about restoring homemaking skills that maybe have been a little forgotten and restoring home, family, and spirit, as I always say. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and click that bell button so you know when I make a new video each weekend. So I've been making my own butter each week. It's just part of the dairy chores that I've fit into our lifestyle now. And I've been making it in the blender. And I find it to be a bit cleaner than doing it in the KitchenAid, which I was doing before, which you still can. But it's just cleaner with having the lid on, less splashes, and it actually makes butter quite faster. I've heard debates on what is the best way to make butter, but you know, you just got to do what works best for you. And that's what I'm doing here in my kitchen. I find that the butter is more workable when it's been ritzed under really cold water and then I can squeeze the rest of the buttermilk out of it. Then I just add some salt, plenty of salt makes it very delicious. And then I put it in the fridge to get nice and cold and hard. I am on the lookout for the perfect butter mold. So if you have any good suggestions for me, let me know in the comments below. So I'm going to get a few other things going. I'm going to make some yogurt here in the Instapot. And I like to use a different sealant ring for the lid of the Instapot just for yogurt. So that I don't have any savory flavors being drawn into the yogurt. And so I'll put a link down in the description box below if you are looking for multiple sealant rings to go in your Instapot for making sweet or savory or just yogurt in your Instapot. If you are looking for an easy dairy product that you can make at home instead of buying it from the store, yogurt is your thing. It is very simple, very easy, and you can make lots of it, and it can go a long way. I actually have a whole video on how to make it in your Instapot, and I'll put that down in the description box below. This, my friends, is my milk kefir that my Amish friend where I get all of this fresh cow's milk from, she gave me some of her kefir grains. Um, kefir grains are one of those probiotics that just keeps going and giving and giving and they actually multiply. So it's something that you can share. This milk kefir grains have been in the fridge for about two weeks. And so I'm just going to refresh these kefir grains. I'm going to actually rinse them off with some of the buttermilk that I saved from the butter that I was making. I like to just give them a rinse of fresh milk, in this case buttermilk, um, when it's been sitting for quite a long while because they're really strong. Um, but note that you should not rinse your kefir grains under water. I have messed that up before. Um, that can take a lot of the nutrients and benefits from your kefir grains. So definitely rinse with milk um, or buttermilk or you don't even have to rinse at all. This is just a preference of mine. Just like a sourdough or any bacteria, you are going to give your kefir grains of feeding and so I'm just going to put these kefir grains back into this jar and put some fresh milk in here and just make as much milk kefir as I want to and then I'm going to put it on the counter at room temperature for about 16 to 24 hours to ferment. I decided to save the buttermilk and the milk kefir mixture in a container for pancakes and whatever I wanted to use it for later um, in replace of buttermilk just because it was so nutrient dense I couldn't stand throwing it away. 
I love cooking yogurt in the Instapot because, well, it tells me when the boiling part is done, it beeps, and then I check the temperature on there. And the longest part really um, is just waiting for it to get down to 110 degrees so that I can add the culture into the yogurt. One thing that I've learned about raw milk is that it's best to freeze it and save it. Um, if you don't, it doesn't last very long in the fridge. I just love the pace of summertime. I love some of these warm, lazy days. And I also love just getting my hands dirty in the dirt or getting involved in the kitchen and just taking advantage of all the fresh produce and things that are in season um, during summertime. So we took a break. We went swimming with the kids, came back, hurried, and threw dinner on the stove because we have a, a softball game to get to but I wanted to show you how I put together a very quick and easy ricotta. It was tender and delicious and mild and we just threw it over our homemade spaghetti and we loved it. So I just threw this ricotta together kind of in the background of making dinner. It took about 15 to 20 minutes. I was surprised how quickly it came together. But the recipe is one gallon of milk. You can use the pasteurized, I think as long as it's not ultra pasteurized, the pasteurized should work. But I'm using raw cow's milk, of course. So one gallon of that, bring it to 175 degrees and then take it straight off the stove. Add one third a cup of lemon juice, one fourth a cup of white distilled vinegar, and then stir that a little bit and it will immediately start to curdle and the whey will separate from the curd. I just strained it slightly. I wanted it to still be kind of juicy and moist and tender. And then we just added that straight onto our spaghetti this would be great, of course, with any pasta dish, lasagnas. Um, you could strain it even more to make it a little bit drier, more of a curd. And then you could add that to your eggs, breakfast dishes, um, sandwiches, toast. But this is a great, easy and quick dairy recipe to have on hand. We were at softball pretty late the night before. You know, those late summer nights when the air is nice and cool in the evenings and everyone stays out late and socializing with friends. It was one of those nights. So the kitchen really didn't get cleaned up. So there was lots to do the next morning. So just tidying up the kitchen and then I'm getting to my kefir smoothie. I wanted to make a kind of a lassie kefir smoothie which is an Indian um, smoothie so I'm going to be doing that with the kefir and just straining the grains out of my freshly fermented kefir it's been sitting here on the counter for about 20 hours so we are going to make a strawberry lassi smoothie today I recently learned that it's typical for Indian homes to be making 
fresh yogurt daily with raw fresh cow's milk and they make smoothies called lassies out of these and so i've been often making these with my yogurt and today i just feel like making it with the kefir i've really made a goal to add more probiotics to our family's diet i just really feel like that's something that we need and so fermenting has been a big goal for me this year and so i'm starting out here with the simple milk kefir grains and then I plan on moving into making some other ferments like sauerkrauts and some other vegetables this summer. So if you couldn't tell I'm totally eyeballing this recipe. It's not exact but you could make it with yogurt or kefir and add that to your blender as much as you want as sour as you want it to be really and then I add a little bit of milk just to um, liquefy it a little bit. I add some cardamom seasoning um, with any fruit that I add there. I think that just adds that kind of splash of, of Indian flavor and makes it unique and it's really delicious. And then today I'm putting a little bit of sweetened condensed milk in here because I don't have any honey and actually it was so delicious. I loved it. Um, another flavor I really love is mango. So that's a good one to try. On one of our evening walks, we discovered a mulberry tree. I am so excited when I find another berry bush on this property. It has been one of my dreams to have berries growing on my property. Um, I grew up in Oregon where berries are plentiful, and I love that about Missouri. So I knew that we were going to have to pull the whole family out here the next day and take advantage of all these mulberries because they have finally ripened and I know that the birds are going to get to them if we don't get to them. So this was a really fun adventure and they are so yummy. I find that some of the best things in life are the simple things. So those are the things that we tend to remember the most or that make the biggest impact. But just because they're simple doesn't mean that they're easy. And when we moved out here to create this lifestyle for our family, it wasn't because it was going to be easy, but we wanted the simplicity and the experience. Like picking berries with the family. We picked these berries. We didn't milk a cow, but we collected raw, fresh cow's milk and we are making ice cream. And it really is about the experience. We could easily go buy berry ice cream from the store, but we're making it instead. And there's something that is so enriching about not just knowing how to do it for educational purposes, but it it feeds my soul to, to have the experience of making the ice cream, of knowing how to make the ice cream. And putting that aside too, just the finished product is such wonderful quality and it tastes so good. And anything homemade really, really does taste better. And, and, you, and the quality is, is far superior. So think about that when someone tells you next time, well, why would you make your own butter? You can just go buy it from the store. Well, that's true. But sometimes it's really about the experience. So let me tell you a bit about this ice cream recipe because it just might change your life. <laughs> this ice cream was just amazing. So the base of this ice cream um, was cream and milk. It has some cream cheese in it that I left kind of chunky. You can see as I melted it on the stove that I left some of those chunks of cream cheese in there. I was really going for a cheesecake ice cream. The recipe actually called for a pudding mix, which I don't usually have those things on hand, but I actually happen to have one. So there's a pudding mix in here. So once that base of the ice cream was put together, we put that in the ice cream maker. And then I put together a berry compote on the stove using our mulberries that we had just picked, 
with some sugar and some cornstarch and a little bit of water, but you can substitute those for any berries that would work for this recipe. This, or the third component for this recipe was the graham cracker swirl. So this recipe is like a deconstructed cheesecake, berry cheesecake, you know, in ice cream form. I didn't have graham crackers, so we crushed some Nutri-Grain Crunchy Bars, which turned out great. Um, they maintained their crunchiness throughout and added some butter and some cinnamon, and it was absolutely delicious. In fact, you're just going to have to give this recipe a try <laughs> and let me know what you think of it. Go ahead and pick yourself up an ice cream maker. We just picked this one up for five bucks at the thrift store, but... I'm learning now that an ice cream maker should definitely be a staple come summertime, especially when you are nine months pregnant or nearly. I will put down the recipe for this berry cheesecake ice cream down in the description box below. I did add the cream cheese that wasn't originally part of the recipe, but I would definitely, definitely add that in the future. So if you remember, Claire, at the beginning of this video, we made some yogurt and it's been sitting in the fridge just waiting for us to use it. So I thought we could make some yogurt strawberry popsicles. Once again, this is a super simple recipe. Just chopping up some strawberries here, adding some chia seeds and a half a cup of cane sugar, and then I'm just gonna boil this on the stove and let it thicken and put it in the fridge to cool. Aren't these popsicle molds the cutest? I got these from Amazon and I love that they come in their own little rack. I can put them right into the freezer. They come with all the pieces, including the popsicle sticks. And so I'll put those down in the description box below, the link for that so you can grab one of those if you want to. Then I just layered the strawberry compote and the yogurt, every other layer and it really gave it that kind of tart yogurt mixed with the sweet strawberries. It was a great combination. They also turned out super pretty. I love the pattern that it made. I also love what the chia seeds added. So it was a huge hit with our family. This is another recipe you're going to have to try. And you can really just put any fruit in there that you want. Strawberries are just what I had on hand but we will definitely be making more of these this summer. Mm -hmm. 
Never be afraid to dive into a new recipe or try something new for the first time. I would like to know which one of these recipes you are going to give a try in your own kitchen with. So put down in the comments below which recipe um, you are most interested in trying. I am always here to answer questions. So um, let me know you're here down in the comments below. Remember, I make a new video each weekend. You can find me here. Make sure that you press that bell button so that you know when I make a new video each week. And I'll catch you next time. Love you lots. So, I have to say that this mulberry ice cream is actually the best ice cream that I've ever had in my life. Mulberry cheesecake ice cream. I'm not just saying that. You're not just saying that because you love me? No, it really is actually better than anything else I've <laughs> ever had before. That's so good. That's super amazing. Mm. Mm. Oh, I, could, I could eat this for the rest of my life. Well, you have been eating it about every night. I'm going to eat it every night. And I will until this baby comes. Yep. <laughs> and I will too until this baby comes. That's what happens. We go in this together. <laughs> what a sacrifice.